Hello. In this video, we're looking at how we would deploy and test our application on one of our displays. So in the previous videos, we've built up a basic application. We have uh, some CAN bus traffic here. We haven't really coded much logic yet or really any logic yet. But in the previous couple of videos, we've added a visualization and some buttons to move from one screen to another. So we've looked at how to simulate our application on the computer, but at some point you're going to want to test it on the display hardware itself. So here we're going to go over how you would do that. Okay, so for me, I'm currently using a VA display for testing. I have it right now hooked up to my computer. So a, a, a prerequisite for this to work is you need to first connect, be able to connect to the display from your computer. So there's many videos uh, online about this. If we come to our support site here under video training, and look into the displays. There's some videos about setting a static IP, connecting with a dynamic IP. If you set the static IP and connect, um, you can just hook it straight up to your computer. So we, we've already discussed this in some other videos, so I won't really go over it, but I will say that we can test with PuTTY to make sure we are able to connect. So for me, I believe my uh, IP address is 192.168.0.2. And we can see that, yes, I am able to connect to the display. So we will look at this maybe a little later in the troubleshooting video if you have trouble connecting to the display. But you will need to have a connection to the display. So right now, my display is hooked up to my computer via Ethernet. Okay, so assuming you can connect to the display and your application builds and compiles correctly, what we're going to do to actually deploy our application to the display is come up here to device. And this assumes that the device description file here or the device version that you're using matches the version on the display. So we can find our device version here and you'll see we're using 3542. The device description file for this is 3542 and this needs to match the runtime on the display. So we'll again discuss this a little bit more in the troubleshooting video if you are unable to connect. But assuming that's correct, right now we have our gateway and you'll notice this is green and this is like a gray color. So this is grayed out, meaning we're not connected right now to our display. In the gateway, we have, sometimes you have multiple gateways here. I'll say for the ARM based devices, so the VC, the VA, the XA, the XS, devices, the IP address can be set to localhost. For our XM devices, you may need to make the IP address the IP address of your display. So to do that, we can say gateway and add new gateway. And for instance, we can say gateway to TCP IP is correct. And for the IP address here, you can type in the IP address of the display. Now for the ARM based devices, this doesn't seem to work. So just keep it at localhost. But you'll notice now that we just added a gateway, uh, that second gateway shows up here. So actually, I'm going to go ahead and try this for so once you have it set to the gateway you want to use, uh, you can hit scan network. Okay, so it actually finds it still so if I type in the IP address of my display, so you noticed from PuTTY it was 192.168.0.2, and I hit scan network, it shows up here. So it shows the VA Linux is found. 
Uh, again, if I use gateway one as a local host, it should also find it. So it does. For the XM based displays or the X86 based devices, I found that you need to set up a gateway directly telling it the IP address of the display. So this is going to depend a little bit on the device you're trying to connect to. But in this case, so maybe it's, it's a good idea just to always type in the IP address as one gateway. But uh, once, once we have that in, you can hit scan network, you find the VA, and you'll notice this target version here. So again, you notice the target version is the runtime that's running on the display. So 3542, which matches the device description version. So we're going to double click this. And now this becomes active. Okay, so we can tell this by the green. So this means that we're actually now connected to our, to our display, which is good. And that's exactly what we want. So from here on out, the, the process for deploying the application is almost exactly the same as what we went through when we did a simulation on our host computer here. So what we can do is we're going to go online and hit login, or we can come over here to this little button and hit login. And it pops up a similar message to well, actually the exact same message as when we were doing the simulation on our computer. So it tells us that currently on the display, there is no application that matches this one. So it's saying, do we want to download it to the display? Uh, yes, we do. So we're going to hit yes. And, and just keep in mind too, this will overwrite whatever application you, Codasys application you have on there, unless it is a boot application. It will not overwrite that application. So, uh, okay, so this is very similar to what we saw in this simulation. So now down here we have this stop. Okay, so this means our application is loaded. So here, you know, we can see the messages. We had zero errors and zero warnings. We expect that. And, you know, our messages and, and things. So, so our application is downloaded to the device, but it's not running. And I can see on my display here, the screen is just a white color. Okay, so it was downloaded, but isn't running. So again, we are going to come here to this arrow and hit start. And there we go. So I can see on my display now that the this user interface has popped up. And you can notice like if I, well, I guess you guys uh, can't see my display, but um, I can control my application. So if I click these buttons on my display, it's moving correctly. We can see that my CAN bus one is active and that's because I actually have that connected right now. CAN bus one, but, or sorry, CAN bus, I guess zero. And then CAN bus one is inactive because I have nothing connected to it from my display. Okay. So yep. Everything's, everything's running. And just like the simulation, I mean, had we, we'll look at putting in some logic coding later, but had we done this, we could see the values of our variables as they're changed on our displays. You know, we could see again, the, the user interface update. If, if we uh, had these gauges linked to anything. So yeah, everything looks good. It's deployed to the display. If we want to make changes, we have to stop the application and log out of the display before we're able to actually make any changes to either our code or user interface. Okay, and so if this didn't work, if you hit scan network, most likely if if you either are not, do not have a Codasys runtime on the device, on the displays, or there's a, a version mismatch. So your version of your device description here does not match the version of the runtime on the display. 
what will most likely happen is you are going to click scan network and nothing will show up here. It'll just say, show gateway one and nothing below it. So that usually indicates that there's either a version mismatch or there's no runtime on the display. So in the next video, we'll look at how to troubleshoot and try to determine what to do if you, you get this problem and you can't connect to the display. All right, thanks for watching.